So we're back looking at our conduit looping method for wiring a lighting circuit, different to how we wire in twin and CPCs, and we've done wiring diagrams of those in other presentations, but this series is concentrating on wiring circuits in PVC singles. Those PV singles are stranded for greater flexibility, and we know for a lighting circuit in a conduit or trunking system, the minimum cross-sectional area with PVC singles is 1.5 millimeters squared. We've created this drawing, and if this is the first in the series of these videos you're looking at, you won't be aware of the following. This is downloadable from the link in the description, and we've been working our way through it. So let's have a quick look at what it is. It explains a little bit about the conduit looping method. We did some circuit diagrams, of which this circuit diagram here, which we completed, will help us with today's presentation, where we want two switches controlling one light using the conduit looping method. We also went on to suggest that you can maybe have a rig like this built at home in plastic or steel conduit. I'd probably recommend plastic conduit for ease. And we've worked our way through stages one to four as well with wiring diagrams. However, I'm gonna alter stage five slightly that we're gonna have one light controlled by two switches so we can show the two-way method. The drawing um, that we did previously in stage four was two lights controlled by one switch and you could develop that through to also be two switches controlling two lights. But for the first uh, part of this drawing, I'm just gonna do it as these two switches controlling this light two wade. We can then extend it to be the other lighting point as well, which would complete stage five. I've got some test result sheets here. If you were at home or at college and wanted to fill those in, that's great, practice your testing. There are other videos on the channel of me actually wiring the circuits we're talking about today and testing them, so check those out. And then at the very back of this booklet, we've got some uh, pictures that we've been working our way through. We've made that one in a previous video. We'll do that in a future video, and this one would need to be printed off several times in order to do the wiring diagram that we're gonna look at today. So let's recap then, the wiring diagram for day will be this light controlled by these two switches. So as there's two switches, we know they're gonna be, in this case, one gang, two wade. So there's a common and L1, L2 on both of these switches. And again, I've said in other presentations, these may be metal clad, they may be grid switches for a conduit system, or you might be just using the same type of switches at college that you'd use possibly in a domestic dwelling because it's easier for obviously the college to keep that sort of stock levels high. So we're gonna have two two-way switches, a light fitting here. Remember the light fittings that we're gonna use only have connections for a switching line, a neutral and the CPCs, and we no longer have that looping terminal here. This conduit looping method, as we've said in other presentations, means the PVC singles cables can go exactly where we need them to go and aren't at points where they're not required. Okay, and we've developed that on to get to this point here. We've got our pens and we're gonna use our colors accordingly. I expect you to plan your route with your cable systems probably better than mine on that, have some crossing over. And I'd also expect you to use a ruler when doing this. But as we're gonna have these as our two lighting points, I need to sort of adapt them slightly to make them more like a lighting point. So if I bring a line across there and across there, and we put two terminals here for our switching line and neutral. And again, if these are batten lamp holders with a bayonet cap, it won't matter which one of these is switching line and which one is neutral. And we've got a CPC terminal as well. It would only matter if these were Edison screw lamp holders. Often colleges use the bayonet cap lamp. And the two switches here need to look like two way switches. So if we put a, a common an L1 and L2 in, so a common L1 and L2, and I'm just gonna mark up the commons like so. The CPC terminal's already in here. So now all it takes is us to wire this accordingly. So we go back to our original circuit diagram and we can have a look at that. We said the neutral for this went from the consumer unit directly to the lighting point itself and we'll do in the wiring diagram we're developing. And we said for this that the line conductor went through possibly our circuit breaker for us at college into the common terminal. Two strappers went across from this two-way switch. So in other words, this two-way switch across to here to the second two-way switch. Our strappers come across and then from the common of this one here, 
we went directly to the lighting point itself. You notice that we have no circuit protective conductors on here and they will take the logical route for the shortest length of cables. So that's why I didn't put them on the actual circuit diagrams here, but we will add them onto the wiring diagram here. So let's just recap then. The neutral went from the consumer unit to the light. From the consumer unit it went to common, two strappers across from common to the actual lighting point itself. And we worked out whether the light was on or off in a previous video when we looked at this. Two way switches, two lighting points of which I'm gonna ignore this one to start with. We're gonna wire it just two way to here. Okay, that's what we're gonna do and we're gonna ignore it. And then we'll just show how we could make this one obviously um, come on at the same time at the end of the presentation. So let's work first of all of these two switches controlling this one light here. And we're gonna start off as we have done before with the neutral. So the neutral itself we said would come from the consumer unit and go directly to the light. And we've got our neutral bar here, our earth bar where our CPCs will be connected and a picture of our fuse. Remember this L and N section here is where the tails would enter our consumer unit and are nothing to do with the wiring diagram we're gonna develop. So we're gonna come out of um, neutral number one, CPC number one, and fuse number one, it's likely that this could be a six amp circuit breaker. In a commercial industrial installation, it could be considered to be higher. It might not be a type B, it might be a type C, etc. But they're all things that we'll touch on later as we develop through our learning. So we're gonna bring our neutral out and we're gonna bring it to our lighting point. So if we bring our neutral through, remember your routes are probably gonna be a lot clearer and you're gonna work out a way that you don't cross too many cables over. So it doesn't matter which one we go into, so I'm just gonna swing it into the first one. Remember if this is a bayonet cap lamp holder, it doesn't matter which one switching line and which one's neutral. So we've got switching line and neutral and an earth terminal for our CPC. So we bring it round, there's our neutral in. We can ignore this light fitting at the moment. That's it, it's finished. Let's go back to our original circuit diagram. Neutral from the consumer unit directly to the lamp. We've done exactly that from the consumer unit directly to our uh, lamp holder here. Let's do the CPCs next then. Okay, so let's do our CPCs next. So we've got our earth terminal here. We've got to make sure that we connect a CPC into here and a CPC into here and a CPC into here. Even if it was fully insulated, so even if our system was plastic uh, conduits and plastic switches, we're always gonna leave a CPC at each of our points in order that if it's changed in the future to a metal part, we know that a metal switch, metal light fitting will be an exposed conductive part. So let's take our green. I'm not gonna overstrike it with yellow this time. I'm just gonna leave it green. I know I did in other videos. And we're gonna bring our CPC round. We're gonna drop one off here. Take one down to here next. So let's do that first. So let's bring our CPC up through our conduit system. And we're gonna drop it off into there. And we're gonna bring a CPC down here in order that we earth our actual switch ourselves. These are not the realistic length that would have our cables at the switches themselves. I'm just swinging it into the shortest possible route. Now we've got a choice, haven't we? You can bring a CPC out of here down to this switch, or we could take it from there. And we've said in other presentations that this might be four or five meter drop. Would you bring it four or five meters up here, across here, six meters, and four or five meters down here? Probably not. You take your nearest CPC across and down to here. So we'll bring that one through. So let's bring our CPC through here and we're gonna swing it into here. So what we've got now is a CPC at our points, ignoring this at the moment. We're gonna add that in later on. We're gonna have these two switches controlling this lighting point here. And we've got our neutral in and our CPCs in. So we're on a good position to be in. Back to our circuit diagram that we've drawn previously. From the consumer unit to common, so from the consumer unit to common, L1 and L2 across to L1 and L2. It doesn't matter if this one's L1 and this one's L2. It doesn't matter if they mix and match, but we'll bring our strappers across. It's only the commons that are important. So we have the permanent line into common and we have out the other common, the switching line to the lamp. It doesn't matter what L1 and L2 are doing. From the fuseway to common, two strappers across to here, to L1, L2, from the common, back to our lighting point itself. So let's do that next. So let's bring our line conductor here, our permanent line conductor is gonna come up through our conduit system. Try not to cross over too much as you come up. And then we're gonna bring it down 
and we're going to connect it directly into our common terminal. So just to recap, from the fuseway directly to common. Now we need to take strappers from L1 and L2 across to L1 and L2 here. Remember, as I just said, it doesn't matter which way around they go. So again, we've got to try and make sure this looks reasonably neat. So if I swing this one around to here, and we swing this one around to here, we've brought those two out. So let's bring those through the system. This brings one of my strappers round. And I'm gonna bring it into there. And then we'll bring this strap around. And again, you'll take more time than me in order to get this as neat as you possibly can. Bring that one into there like so. So I've gone from these L1 and L2 across to here, L1, L2, and I'm not bothered if that one's L1 and that one's L2, and they're not the same way around here. It makes no difference. And then what we need to do is bring our last common out. So we've brought our strappers across, and now from a common, we just go directly to our lighting point itself. So out of common, I'm gonna bring that one up, and we're gonna bring that through to go to here. Okay, believe it or not, that's it. That's the wiring diagram done. We used the circuit diagram we produced earlier on in order that we could get these two switches controlling this lighting point here. Now in the booklet that I've given you, um, it says that you're gonna actually do maybe these two lighting points controlled by these two switches. But that's where I wanna stretch and challenge people. So you've gotta think about what you've done with this drawing if you were to wire that circuit. So we've got this lighting point at the moment coming on. We've ignored this lighting point here as if it was not part of the system as well as we've ignored these here. And we've wired that one light fit in two wide. So now you gotta think of how do I get a CPC to here? How do we get a neutral to here? And how do we get a switching line to here? So let's think then. So this CPC that came through the conduit from this switch to here, what you could do in order to make this have a CPC is not come back again from here, but you disconnect it here, pull it back to here, and then put a new one in between the two. So that would give you a CPC connection there and limit the number of connections in this point here. So let's think again. At the moment, we've got our common coming back to turn on this lighting point. If we wanted to turn on both lighting points, yeah, we could take one back to here and come back, and we could come back with a neutral as well. That's one solution. You could drop this one back into here. However, I like my last lighting point. This is where you need to think. I like my last lighting point to have only one of everything, as in switching line and neutral. So I would bring back a switching line from here to here and a neutral from here to here, making this have one neutral and one switching line conductor. Then when I undone here and looked at it, I would see two neutrals, two switching lines. When I undone here, I'd see one neutral and one switching line, making me believe that this one was the last one on the circuit. This used to catch my students out quite a lot because what they'd end up doing is bringing um, cables back um, from here. So they'd take this cable out here and bring it back into here, making this have two switching lines. And they'd bring a neutral through and it'd have one neutral here. So we'd have two neutrals, one switching line. And then we'd have one neutral and two switching lines. And I'd say to them, how would I know what was the last point on the circuit? So for me, for logic's sake, I would like us to make sure that this one had two switching lines and two neutrals. And how would we achieve that? We'd just take them back through into here in order to turn it on. And you could carry the system on. If you wanted this lighting point on as well, you'd bring your neutral and your switching line through. And you'd then have two-way switching, not of two lighting points, but of three. If that last bit's starting to stretch you a little bit, just remember the first part of the presentation, how we wanted to create these two switches controlling this lighting point here. And that's the wiring diagram I've left you with. And I get my students then to develop that to be able to turn on more lighting points, but leaving it logically. I'd like the last lighting point to have only one neutral and one switching line. So when you got to it, you'd think that was the end of the circuit rather than having two of one and one of the other. So that's our conduit method, looping method, using the two-way switching of one lighting point. We've talked about developing it to two points as well. We can see that when wiring in PVC single cables, so when we're using these single insulated cables, we only take the conductors to exactly where we need them. So we took the line conductor directly into common, 
we took L1 and L2 strappers across to L1 and L2 over here. And from the common terminal, we went back to turn on our lighting point. Our CPCs followed the shortest and most logical route round. And it linked in with the circuit diagram that we did previously, the line to the common, two strappers across from L1 and L2, from common to the lighting point, neutral came directly to the lighting point. And that's where we're up to. If you've jumped in at this video and haven't watched any of the previous ones, you knew a little bit, you know, all oh, this is a lot to take in. We have built our way towards this point of where we've now got two switches controlling one light. And as we move forward, we will go on and do two-way and intermediate. We'll add a third switch in. But I'd like us to think about how we could make this lighting point come on from what we've done in the last video and maybe how we could make this lighting point also come on at the same time. So these two switches may be in an office at each end. We're turning on several lighting points within the same area. So you turn on the switch as you walk into the office, turns on four, five, six um, fluorescent light fittings or spotlights, etc. You walk out the other end of the office and you can turn them off as well. So we're using the conduit looping method using PVC singles in order to wire our lighting circuits using this method. And as always, I hope this video has been some help.